Hello Underwater friends, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the color page and I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about it. Okay, to go on the color page we just click here on color and then we arrive on the color page. So first we're going to talk about the things that are on the top. So here you see gallery, you can choose to see the gallery, you can as well see the LUTs or the media pool. You can pick one or the other. If you don't want, you just click on it and then you don't have anything here. Same thing for here, you have timeline. So if you want to see the timeline, you click here. If you want to see the clips, you click here. The nodes here. And then you can even have the effect over there. So we have many more informations like this, but the problem is that the picture is very small. So most of the time when you work on correcting a picture, you just want to do it on one picture at the time. I mean, one clip at the time. So you don't really need all of that. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to remove the clips, the effects. Now I'm just keeping the nodes because that's how we correct our picture. You can reframe it a little bit. And now, as you can see, the image is much bigger. Here also on the top, you have this little rainbow or something. It helps you to see the before and after. So before the corrections and after the corrections. So here we decided to be on color wheels, primary here. But you also have a checker. If you have a checker with you, then you can make white balance much easier. So right now we're going to go on color wheels. Color wheels, the way it works, here you have lift, gamma, gain and offset. The lift is the dark, gamma is mid-tones, gain is highlight, and offset is changing actually the whole spectrum up and down. As you can see, if I take here and I go right, everything goes up, so it's brighter. If I go down, everything is darker. If I want to choose only one color, I can go on this one and you see this arrow and then I can choose to change only the red, for example, bring it up or down. As you can see, it doesn't change the shape of the wave. It just brings it up and down. Just for you to understand, here around 1000 is the highest brightness you can have and zero is the dark, like completely black. So when you change this cursor, you're going to affect your picture. So here, what do we have before to work on the cursors here? We have here auto white balance. So you can click on it and just see how it works. It makes it very bright. Sometimes it's interesting, but this time it's not so much. So I do Ctrl Z and I go back. Here also you can pick the white balance. So you click here and then you pick a place, for example, a gray place here. And then that's your white balance. In that case, it doesn't work so well. But if you have something gray on you, especially outside of the water, it will work nicely. Many times the color corrections like this when you're underwater are very difficult because of the blue of the water. So it doesn't always work. So what are you going to do? Then you may change the temperature, make it a little bit warmer or colder. The tint, magenta on the right and green on the left. Then here you have the contrast, less contrast on the left, more contrast on the right. If you want to reset something, you just double click on it and it's going to go back to the original settings. Mid and details, it's sharpness and softness. So you go on the right, it's sharper. And you go on the left, it's softer. Color boost is going to help you boost your colors. And as you can see, it's just getting the waveform to be wider than before. And if I go down, it's going to go all the way black and white. Shadow is going to just change the shadows. Highlight, well, of course, going to change the highlights. Saturation is going to increase or decrease the saturation. Hue is going to change the colors. So be very careful because you could end up with a orange background like here. Okay, so it's changing the colors completely. Now the water is green. And now it's like pink. And the turtle is green. 
Then you have those cursors. So for the lift, you have different options to change things. You can use the wheel here. So for example, for the lift, I want to go like this. So I'm, in, I'm changing to blue, to orange, green. Or I can use those. Personally, I think those are easier to correct because you can just look at your form on the right and then at the same time say, okay, maybe I don't have enough red or maybe the, the red doesn't go down enough. So I can just go here and bring the red down. For the gamma, it's like the mid-tones. So you're going to increase here. So it's going to bring everything up a little bit. And then again, it's like highlight. So maybe I want a little bit more red. Here we go. And I want everything to go up a little because we want to be close to 1000. So like this. Now we can see that the image is too bright because we have still a lot of space before the zero. So we can just bring it down. We can bring the green and the blue a little bit more like so okay and now we can just okay so now we can see the before and after before and after so it's already much better you can also see you can also use this one so before and after for the contrast one of the things we can do as well is use this one the curves so you can pick a point here and bring it down because here it's the dark and here's the highlight and bring it up a little. Like this, you have more contrast on your picture. It's called an S curve. Next one is here. It's called color warper. So here we can increase to see better what's going on. And you can choose a point which represents a color and change it. You can also go on your picture and for example, click here. And me, I want to go a little bit more blue. So I will go right a little bit. And as you can see, it's changing only the blue of the water. Here is the windows. So we're going to go on a different node. So for example, I want to make the head brighter. So I'm going to pick the circle here, place it where I want, resize it. Like so. A little bit smaller on top. I can turn it here. Okay. And I can increase the feather. Here we go. With the red one, I can increase the feather. And now, as you can see here, the correction is going to be only on the head. So if I want, I can get a turtle with a red head. Here we go. Of course, that's not what we want, but the correction is done only on that part. So it can be quite interesting. You can also have different shapes, rectangle or whatever you want. And if you want, you can also add some new ones. So you have this, but you can also do plus and add a curve. And when you go back to the point, that's where you are. Okay. So now I'm changing the color on both of those. So let's try to see, for example, with the offset, making it all dark. And as you can see, what's in the, what's in the shapes is changed, but the rest is not. So one of the interesting things we could do with that is try to put like some kind of vignetting. So make a shape like this. Okay, like that. And then we want to invert it here. And then we can make it a little bit darker. And you can see that around the picture, there is a little darker area, which is going to help us see the creature in the middle a little bit better. Next one is the tracker. So you can choose a point and decide to track a point to change something, to add something to it. Here's the magic mask. So normally it's for humans, but maybe it would work for a turtle. So you just make a little line like this, and then you can try to select it and it's going to follow the subject. And then you can correct only the subjects you choose. We're not going to do it because we don't need it, but that's the way it works. Next one is blur. So this one is going to change the blur, blur and sharpness. So if you go up, it's going to be very blurry. And if you go down, it's going to be super sharp. So sometimes, for example, if you use a GoPro or something like this, 
and you set your sharpness to low, then you can just add some sharpness here because your image is too soft by going down a little. Don't overdo it. It's not so nice when it's too sharp, but you can do a little bit. One of the very interesting things on the right is this one with the scopes. So here we have the parade, but we can go to waveform, which is about the same. So you see the red, the green and the blue, but also the white. Vector scope is going to help you when you have humans because this is the line of the skin tone normally. So you want your skin tone to be following this line. Histogram is more the one that you're going to use if you use to photography because that's the same representation. Once again, zero being the super dark, the black, and 1000 being the super bright white. So you don't want to go further than those numbers, but you still want to try to get your histogram to be a little bit wider. And the one I use all the time is the parade. Same thing, highlights on top, shadow on the bottom, and then you can decide how you want your curve to be. So like we did before, here I go darker, and here I go brighter. Probably I have too much green, and just in a few clicks I get my picture to look much better. If you want, you can also extend your scopes like this, or get it smaller. And one final thing, you can also have the keyframes. So if you want to make a change different at the beginning and at the end, for example, because you change depth and the water temperature is not the same, and then if I go here, I can decide to make it super bright. And I go here, I decide to make super dark. And then we're going to see that it's going to go from very dark to very bright. Because we selected different keyframes. Don't hesitate to put a like. You can also subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. That will help me to improve. And also, up there, there is a video on how to color grade with DaVinci Resolve. Bye-bye. Happy bubbles.